Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's edition of the Real Wrestling Podcast. The unprofessional version, because apparently that's now a thing on our on our little um, lovely new graphics that our lovely Lauren has done. I'm back, um, unfortunately for everybody, because, you know, people don't like me. It's fine. I'm an <laughs> asshole. I accept that fact. Yay. Um, <laughs> so welcome to my lovely co-host, Lauren, who very graciously stepped in and did uh, the last two podcasts for me, which I love, love you for, because I was poorly sick and dying. So thank you for that, my darling. You're welcome. And today we are joined, I mean, look at that smiley face. (laughs) We are joined by possibly one of the most beautiful women in the wrestling industry today. I absolutely adore this girl. She does everything and she makes every company look good with all her socials. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the wonderful Katie. Hello, my darling. Hello. You need to stop that, though. I'm going to well, fancy you dead loads if you keep flattering me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been told flattery will get me everywhere, so I'll just try my best. <laughs> it's working. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> so we have another podcast where it's just all females and we get to talk and bitch about wrestling because let's be fair that's always fun to do and yeah I have cake today so yay I'm happy (laughs) I have coffee I have cake I'm good we can talk and talk and talk now but my first question Katie is do you like chicken nuggets I'm a vegetarian so oh no I, I like I like corn <laughs> chicken nuggets. I like corn ones. That counts, right? <laughs> yeah. If it says it's meant to be a chicken nugget, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's a good. pretend chicken nugget. I used to like when I was meat eater. I like chicken nuggets. Fair I, don't, enough, I just then. don't like eating the chicken part of it. But <laughs> you just like the, the nugget, nugget part. part. <laughs> I'm all for the nuggets. I love the nuggets. Bad. Yeah. Uh, that's my one silly question to start with. So yeah, I, I'm I'm good for now. I know Lauren, you're gonna want to make me do actual work. To be fair, uh, while you're on food and I've got atomic on the brain, all I'm thinking about now is next Wednesday getting one of those cookies. <gasps> you mean for cake hole? One of the cake hole cookies? Yeah, because yeah. I mean, yeah. as much as I love the wrestling at Atomic, um, the pizza is top notch, and mm-hmm. those cookies. Is, they just make my night. <laughs> I'm, I'm Do you know tech, what? And I've got the best snack you could possibly find. So what else? Could I'm you all have? about the best snacks, so so it has to follow. We have Honestly. to have the best snacks available at all times. So, but cake hole. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm thinking cake about hole. them now, and I'm getting sad because I don't have one. I mean, I have a some form of cake in front of me, but you I want one specific cakes <laughs> you will get them i mean obviously remember the birthday i remember with you when we were I, I was cutting up the birthday cake and i was like we've saved you some birthday cake and you were so happy about I it was. <laughs> it was because i tried buying one of the cakes and they said they'd put one to one side for me and then they sold it and i got so sad and you just appeared out of nowhere yeah. with birthday cake it was the happiest moment of my life <laughs> Never sit on, never sit on a cake or cake. They go like that, or cookies or anything. Well, this is what I've started doing now. The girls, bless them, I've started literally going up before we've even opened doors for the show and going, "Can I take a cake now?" And I'll bring you the money back later. On. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Honestly, best people ever. They like two of my best friends who do it, who make the cakes and the cookies and stuff. And like, obviously, they're friends with the Atomic Clocks. We've been friends for a long time. And they are vegan. Everything they make is vegan. And, like, you just wouldn't even know. They're just so good, like, what they do. And, yeah, I think about them all the time. And my birthday is coming up, and I know what cake's coming up at some point, so I'm going to be very happy about that. (laughs) It's, like, the gift every year. Yeah, obviously, I'll bring you a slice. Don't you worry. (laughs) But, yeah, I love them. Atomic's a little bit fattening, isn't it, really, if you think about it? Pizza cake biscuits beer <laughs> and i was just about to say pizza outside beer inside cakes inside. yeah it's um it's not good for the old waistline is it really mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> those wrestlers i feel so sorry for them at our shows sometimes <laughs> they have so much 
like everyone else is eating pizza and I mean you see a lot of them when they come out of the ring they all sneak out to the van to get themselves a pizza yeah. but it must be so hard just sitting I mean generally I find obviously as someone who doesn't drink I'm in a similar situation most of the time but being in a venue not just being in a brewery is worse but being in any of the wrestling venues <laughs> as a wrestler going in to do a job and just everyone else being smashed and having a great time yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> weird dynamic some do great things for us but watch everybody else enjoy themselves so much yeah. <laughs> I mean, and we put loads of snacks do come and, and stuff get backstage so it doesn't drink after, so. yeah when there's time I, I don't even like the last show I got a garlic bread and I made a point of saying I got a garlic bread. There was a picture and everything just to point out. But normally I don't because I'm running around. So I don't have time to. Don't so, like, I don't know. Photos that you're on. Like, Pardon. you don't have to breathe. Like, it's, 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 a, it's a busy time. The last two <laughs> four day weekend, I think I saw you for approximately two minutes over two entire days. Because <laughs> I was just... running merch. You were running around taking pictures and doing socials. and Yeah anything else that's the worst part about it is like i love working backstage for wrestling but my job is literally being silent for the whole of that time <laughs> if i'm filming i can't talk because then everybody hears a conversation that comes on yeah so I've got, it's fine most of the time but act two i've started becoming a pain in my backside because they like <laughs> jack likes to come and pain me by trying to ruin all the footage that i have or making me stare at the floor, or do something, anything he can to distract me from what I actually need to do. <laughs> Why does <laughs> that not surprise me? No, oh, honestly. <laughs> Every time yeah. I see him at the moment, he's like, are we going to be friends today? And I'm like, I'm not the one causing problems, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> but I love oh. my job, but I do have to ignore people, and sometimes that's a bit, I don't like that bit, but the rest of it. Until that to appear. Ben, that's much, but yes. <laughs> I genuinely think we need to start doing it where you just drop a word in every now and again on any of your videos or your social posts or anything and just make it like a sentence across like several videos and see if anybody picks up on it. <laughs> that's a pretty good idea, actually. I'm very much into that kind of thing. Give me something cryptic. We'll, we'll make it into something. We've had oh, enough. You've given me ideas now. I need, especially now it's Halloween. <laughs> I think we've had enough cryptic stuff with Lim Reaper doing his weird stalky whatever that was going on. Like, yeah. Don't even. Here is my cat as well. She's very upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was not okay. That was very disturbing. It, it was yeah, very entertaining to start with, with all the, the, can't even think what they're called, when, with, when you've got to work out the letters and things. Oh, that was great. And then he started with the creepy stalky videos. Well, that's um, the thing. I wasn't paying attention. And then, uh, then, it was, then it was very much in my face of like, oh, hello, like we're in your house. I'm in yeah. your house. Yeah. And then, you know, Mark being really upset and everyone was really upset. It's a bit, a bit disturbing. A bit much. I like a horror. I like a like, clue and things, but not when it's like a personal thing. Yeah. I thought no, we were fans. How horrifying are we going at the brew house of horror? Oh, I don't know <laughs> how. But I know some of the costumes and I'm very excited. <laughs> so it's weird. We've got, obviously, the two very spooky shows coming up. We've got Infamous coming up, who have gone one direction. We've got a spooky scramble and we know all the characters, but we don't know who's playing which character. And then we've got Atomic, who have gone the opposite way who we know everyone that's in the Rumbles, but we don't know what they are. And I don't know which one I'm more excited about. You're going to be excited about Lana and Rob. Trust oh, me. No, I, like, Trust me. You killed me. I'm I swear, so their, their Barbie and Ken was glorious. Like, I know. Like, how can they top that? That is what I want to know. Oh, honestly. The way I, Rob shoots it that pink outfit though and every time anyone complimented him on it he was just so mortified like no stop saying it Lana's gonna make me wear this again <laughs> I genuinely I'm, think that outfit is now in rotation in his wardrobe <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't seen it again to be honest it was fantastic 
but they never let us down ever like and just yeah it's gonna be great i can't wait <laughs> it's really good it's gonna be so good <laughs> but um yeah it's not just that there's some other really good matches on that show like the only one that's coming to mind at the minute is troy ryan versus sam bailey like... <laughs> did you see recently that sam put up hashtag no walls when he did a post <laughs> on x <laughs> and it made me laugh so much because it's so funny but like oh Everyone, my god when troy <laughs> threw an um, overman into a wall oh. <laughs> I, was, I was just about to say for anybody who doesn't understand that reference it is literally Troy Ryan picked up Scott Oberman and launched him into the wall. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it before. <laughs> never. Like, honestly. But that this was, hashtag no walls is now my favourite hashtag in the world. <laughs> I don't like Twitter as a rule, but I think, well, X, whatever we're calling it, I don't know anymore. But that has just made me want to go on it and be like, yes, I need to see the hashtag no walls. <laughs> hashtag no walls. Yeah. No, I think it was... I think it was just the the promo of the match where Sam had just put hashtag no walls and I was I I did reply with just like a dead emoji with a cry and laughing face because I was just like that's so funny. I mean, obviously, if you're gonna wrestle Troy now, I think everyone should be fearful of being thrown into a wall. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm I'm just glad that there was no walls in the vicinity at Salford City Wrestling then because. I mean, there was a ceiling low enough. <laughs> I said, someone, someone took the ceiling tile out. Is that where we go next? Hashtag no ceilings. <laughs> I, I think that might have to be the next one because a, a couple of people did take their heads off on the ceiling. <laughs> and so a few people took oh, their heads no. off on the beams and then Jack Johnson, I think, I'm sure it was Jack, got launched up and actually dislodged a ceil ceiling tile. No, it was Dave. It was Dave. Oh, it was Dave Birch. Sorry. Yeah. Is everyone okay? <laughs> Oh, yeah, everyone's fine, but it was right. well. I don't know. I still need to give uh, Dave Birch a good slap round the face after he uh, attacked me for the steel chair. Yeah, Dave <laughs> Birch is in trouble with real wrestling. But yes. Have you, been, have you been wrestling with steel chairs? Have I missed something? Yeah. So we'd at Salford City, we'd got a nice little steel chair. We'd taken it to all the talent before the show, got it signed. We're raffling it off. Um, so it's going to be on the website soon as a signed chair. Um, it was advertised all show, and then during the main event, Dave Birch, they were throwing each other. So, did Troy throw him across the bar? Yes. I start with, <laughs> as they got on the way back to the ring, Dave Birch decided to pick up our raffle prize of a steel chair and smash Troy Ryan over the head with it and then smash him over the back with it. So, it's now got a delightful dint in it, thanks to Dave. And yeah, but... Warren decided to shout at Dave for picking said chair up, to which I got hit by Dave. <laughs> I've done okay? nothing. <laughs> I'm just all I'll say is it is a good job I have padding on my chest area because oh, it helps. Still though, that oh, hurt. hurt. Don't get me wrong, it hurt. <laughs> I'm just glad it wasn't Troy. Because I yeah. guarantee <laughs> I would not have a chest anymore. It'd be concaved in. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh. true. I can't. I can't say <laughs> anymore. Yeah, so uh, we we need to be having words with Dave. Naughty Dave, man. Dave, chairs, Troy, walls. <laughs> We've got quite a collection. <laughs> I was going to say, come on, there's got to be somebody else who's got a weird thing that we can like tables. have as a hashtag. Everybody gets Tony tables. Oh, Tony Tables, that's very, it's, it's so funny the way that that has gone, like, I love how much the Atomic crowd loves Tony, he yeah. deserves it though, Tony is just, yes. oh, little babe, I love him so much, but I was very happy last not night. as much as Atomic, <laughs> not as much as them. Yeah, Future Shock last night, he was tagging with Rhino um, and Joe Blazer, and even with those two class talents in the ring, it was Tony Wright that got the pin, and I was so happy. Yeah. Yeah. He's so sweet. He's he is just like, a little heart for our business. I love him. I do. I love him. I'm sure. I've, Jamie, have we spoken about Tony Wright's Nazi Pants on this podcast before? I feel like we have. Yes, but we have. He's mm -hmm. got amazing flipping Bret Hart pants and other things. Like and Edge pants. Yeah, because yeah, I said, how is it that he can walk around wearing those? And they suit him and they look absolutely fine. Whereas if one of us did it, we would look a complete and utter ass. <laughs> <laughs> It's the hair. You can get away with anything just through the hair. It's fantastic. <laughs> Katie, like your hair, 
it's the same with you. Your hair always looks stunning. It doesn't matter what the rest of you is doing. Your hair is always on point and you always look good. Oh, thanks. I'm always so insecure about my hair, so that makes me very happy. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I've ever I seen off. you look anything other than perfectly put together, though, Katie, to be fair. <laughs> was it you, Lauren, that I was telling the other day when I was said that, like, for shows and for anything that I'm, like, prepared for, I can look all right, but the rest of the time I just look like I, I'm a little bit homeless. <laughs> <laughs> like, my, I work in an office um, for my, my proper boring life job, but my hair's in a bun. I have like full on like plain clothes, leggings, absolutely. You would not recognize me. I'm a completely different person. <laughs> just completely different. We just walk past you. you in the street. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I started training um, this week for a new new part of wherever I am. Um, we've had to start a different job. And somebody was like, oh, like, you know, what are you doing for the weekend? Are you going to have a nice weekend? Like, somebody new on the team. And I was like, oh, I think I'm going to go and watch some wrestling. Because I was meant to go to Future Shock yesterday. But I am very sick. <laughs> I am very poorly at the moment. I've been in bed all day watching horror films until now. Um, and I was like, wrestling? He was like, wrestling? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Like, I work, like, I do back I work backstage at wrestling. Like, you know, I go and watch it. And he was like, really <laughs> I was like, yeah and I was like that's what I do that's what I do like outside of work and he's like wow I would never have guessed and I was like okay <laughs> it was always amazing like I was talking to oh I was trying to book a wedding DJ and he added me on whatsapp and my whatsapp profile picture is me with our real wrestling belt um and he, literally the second message he sent me was I love the belt what explain so I then had to tell him sort of what I do within British wrestling and stuff. And he's like, I was literally sat in the bath this morning watching Raw. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, and he didn't know what, the, why did you have to explain the belt then? That doesn't make any sense. Because <laughs> he recognised it as a wrestling belt. But he was oh, like, okay. why have you got one? Like, what belt is it? Um, yeah. But he was very interested in the wrestling. And he was like, it's not often you find people that sort of, are also into it you get a lot of people that go oh yeah i used to watch it yeah but considering how many stadiums and stuff WWE and AEW sell out and they come over here it's like it's like finding a pin in a haystack like, it really is it's it so really weird is. it is weird but i like it in a way as well it's kind of like finding new people it's like a little challenge it's like yeah, mm, yeah. Do we you get to do go out and find the other weird people yeah <laughs> I was actually at the doctor's the other day wearing, uh, I think I had a Progress t-shirt on, and he was like, is that a wrestling t-shirt? I was like, yeah, well, I was like, you had another one on last time you saw me, didn't you? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, do you like wrestling? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, my brother's friend's a wrestler in St. Helens. I was like, oh, right. And he's like, yeah, I think he's called Buster Ellis or something. I was like, oh, yeah, LWF's current, like, Red Rose champion. <laughs> well, he's not anymore. Um, lost it last time. But it was just so odd sitting there sort of, getting my prescription and then him just talking about someone that I announced into a ring two weeks ago <laughs> like what a it happens more than you think some guy that I know who's been training really hard in the office like he's gone and done like amazing work like he looks amazing and he came up to me the other day and he was like my trainer says he's training a wrestler and I was like he was like, you might know them and I was like okay cool who is it he's like I don't know but it's a wrestler you'll probably know them and I was like great <laughs> <laughs> thank you probably if they're in liverpool then no, probably but <laughs> i'm gonna need more context to continue this conversation i think people think it's a very small thing because of like yeah. what you were saying like you know it doesn't seem like a lot of people talk about it but obviously thousands and thousands of people go to the shows and yeah. all of that but it is very niche like i wouldn't say that i would talk about wrestling outside of the people i know in wrestling unless i'm talking about the fact that I went to wrestling and people like, hmm, like, and remember like all the very old school wrestlers and they're like, oh, I used to watch that when I was a kid, but like nothing outside of that. So yeah. it's yeah. nice when you, you, you know, people that come up and they know what you're talking about. <laughs> that happens when everyone goes, oh, like Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks or when they're like, oh, back when DX and that were a thing. And I'm sort of like, yeah. I came to wrestling really late. Like I started watching wrestling in 2014 me um, that's me so 
there's a lot of the old stuff that I've sort of caught up with little bits, but I don't know. And people start throwing all this stuff at me from like when they like from 30 years ago when they were a kid, and I'm like, no. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm like that though. Of Atomic or Infamous or Progress, and I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm there. <laughs> I think we're all like that, though. Well, I, think, I, I used to be. I used to be a like a British encyclopedia of wrestling. Like it used to be, I could tell you everything from 1996 up until present day. No, I'm rubbish. <laughs> I'm rubbish. I like wrestling, but I'm very like Lauren. I'm very. I'm very new to the game, but I even probably knew it. So I started working at TNT. I thought 2000. I think I only started watching wrestling like three years before that, just because of the people that I was like hanging out with, which is Chris and yeah. Matt that are now doing Atomic. Yeah, like just go just through knowing them and then watching wrestling, and I'd go over and watch wrestling with them, and I was like, yeah, this is fine. And then we started going Progress, with, like Jim Smallman, and then everybody, and then I was just like, I actually quite like this. It's actually quite cool. So I know stuff probably from then onwards but i'm still learning I've, st I've still got a lot to learn there's a lot of history that i don't know about wrestling yeah. and i'm yeah. fine with that <laughs> this is where i think me and lauren work well together because i do like i know the tv type stuff like the wwe tna wcw all that stuff whereas lauren knows brit rest inside and out whereas i don't i've literally only got into brit rest from working with real wrestling yeah. like which has been what nearly two years now so it's like yeah i'm very brand new to like the brit rest scene but give me anything else i can go very far back <laughs> we can all learn from each other i guess <laughs> mm -hmm. but between you two oh, definitely. Uh, that's the thing there's too many gatekeepers that are sort of like oh if you don't know that you can't be a real wrestling fan and i'm like but why like it's just not true <laughs> It's do you true. like wrestling yes right you're a wrestling fan well done yeah i <laughs> genuinely think there's people that would hate the likes of me and you lauren for like being in rest working within wrestling without having all of that back history and just being a part of it was that without having like you know like all of that background but it's not about that though it's about no. like you know if you love it you love yeah. it like when I stepped into it, I was just like, oh, this is like a violent soap opera. I love this. <laughs> like, give it to me. Give me more of this. <laughs> Redneck that's ballet. That's what we got. <laughs> yeah. It's that passion that you bring to it that makes you good at your job. You could know the entire history of everything and be bored of it. So you would be crap at your job because yeah. you've lost that fire for it. Whereas because you, yeah. you're inspired by it and you want to promote it and you appreciate the people that you're working with when you're doing the social posts you're like woohoo this is great rather than just being like yeah whatever this is sort of mundane now yeah but well i love how i look at wrestling because i think i enjoy it a lot more than people other people because i haven't watched it as long not yeah. that i they don't enjoy it but i've gone to shows with people and they've gone, yeah, yeah, like, you know, it was fine. I was like, well, you could kidding? Like, did you not just see what I saw? Like, that was really cool. <laughs> this, and this I really where, enjoy it. I have the same sort of thing because, like, I don't really watch WWE and stuff like that anymore because it bores me now. Whereas I go to, like, Atomic or TNT or, like, Infamous off the page and I, I want to see everything. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, give me this any day of the week sack off all like the big production of you know all the american stuff like give me this give me the homegrown like fighting tooth and nail for this position and i am happy like i absolutely love that sort of stuff well that's the thing i think um ben cecil put out a tweet the other day saying that um something about this uh a boom in wrestling or a revolution or something and it was coming from the grassroots um and i 100 percent agree with him you look at the sort of smaller promotions that a lot of fans would sort of dismiss or look over and they're the ones that are getting people invested like obviously working with real wrestling we end up getting um like call sheets and stuff shown to us so kayfabe it's it's planned um we know results going into some shows yet 
it it doesn't affect me. I can still stand there and still scream at someone because even though I know that they're going to lose, they're still engaging me and they're still getting me interested. Mm-hmm. And that you just don't get that with the TV stuff. It's yeah. not the same. It's not the same without an atmosphere. Yeah. I fell in love with it at pro- well, I say this. Progress was like one of the first shows that I went to, but it was Fighting Spirit before that. And I just absolutely watching the actual like watching the actual people do it in real life. Like actual real life was just like, oh my god, <laughs> they actually do that. That's actually amazing. Yeah. And that's <laughs> that's how I fell in love with it. If I just watched it on TV, I don't think I would have had the same no, love for it. I yeah. watched bits of NXT sort of on TV and I'd watched highlights of the Monday Night Wars because my ex-husband was watching back the whole lot um, and then we went to a progress show in Sheffield and it was Lycos's return after one of his unfortunate bits of injury with his shoulder and the atmosphere for that was insane um, but one of the matches was Chris Brooks versus uh, Angelico and they came out the ring, they were in the crowd, they were battering each other with chairs and kicking each other, and they're literally like this far away from me. And I was just like, oh my God. Like yeah. the NXT stuff had interested me, and then I was just in that atmosphere, like, what on earth is going on? Like, this is insane. I absolutely love it. And I was hooked from there. Yeah. I just, yeah. Like you saying that makes me think it's not quite as big as that but I was at a, a progress show in the Victoria warehouse in Manchester um, and it was like when Ginny was cutting Tony Storm's hair off with scissors she literally threw her like into like the audience and was just cutting hacking her hair and I was like what the hell is this I love it <laughs> carry on carry on it was just like little, just little things I was just like mm, why have I not watched this for long ago <laughs> But you don't get the same from watching that on the telly, though, do you? But I do love, obviously, yes. I do love watching it on the television, but I don't, I'm not as caught up as probably most people are with watching it because I don't watch it all the time, but I do watch the big shows and things like that. But Same. I stick to now watching the big shows. Like, give me a Royal Rumble any day of the week. I will sit, I will watch that full show because yeah. the Royal Rumble, it, it keeps me entertained. But, like, I've even gone off WrestleMania now, though. Because it's it's not even that it's too long. It's just half a time. It there's, there's some matches just thrown on there for the sake of it, and you know I think there's maybe what two or three big storyline matches, and then that's it. The rest of it's just filler for two nights worth of wrestling, and it's just no. <laughs> it's two nights worth of royal rumbles. <laughs> <laughs> Loving life, but yeah, it's. It's it's not the same as it used to be when I was. I, I don't know if it's because I'm old and jaded now, and it's like it's not the same as when I was a kid. But yeah, it's it's it doesn't have the same effect anymore. And I think partly that is due to me going to Brit rest shows and enjoying myself more and meeting better people because of it. Do you know what I mean? Aww. Do you think you'd enjoy it more though if it was if you went to it and watched it? No. I've been to live shows for WWE. I've been to live shows for TNA, and no, <laughs> fair enough. It sounds really bad, doesn't it? But no, genuinely, like I think, I think what it is for me because obviously with me getting into British wrestling because of working with real wrestling, I've had a bit of a, a weird spot because I I'm not a fan as such I mean I am because I I love wrestling I'm a fan of wrestling but I'm going there to do my job but at the same time I'm getting to meet the talent I'm getting to talk to the backstage talent I'm getting to talk to you know everyone that works to make it all happen and because I know the people that are now doing it it makes me more invested because it's like well no they're my friends now like I get to be so proud of how well my friends are doing I get to be so proud of you know them being able to do this thing and do it alongside a full-time job or you know being a parent or you know whatever it is they've got going on and yet still managed to smash it out the park in front of however many people they're doing it in front of and yeah. to me that's that's what makes it better for me because it's just like these guys this isn't their main job and yet they can still do this better than quite a lot of people who are probably getting paid like 
stupid money to do it in the big time. I know. I kind of I get that. It's like the you, the proudness of knowing people. It's just like, oh, you're so good at doing that. Yeah. Like, I still don't know how they do it. It still amazes me every time it's, I watch people. It's seeing the, the sort of the personal development. I remember when you did your first backstage interviews at Infamous. Oh, and one like, and only time. <laughs> you were so terrified. But it went so well. You couldn't tell on screen. And it was like you wouldn't have had any idea that it went that you were that petrified before you did it honestly i mean i didn't know that was going to happen so the two pints i'd had before that probably helped a little bit just a little <laughs> bit, bit. <of> courage <laughs> um but uncle ryan helped me with that a lot because i was just like oh my god i can't i can't i don't know what i'm doing because they talked to me about it before but i didn't know that it was going to happen that day yeah, and yeah. i think it may happen again I don't know, we'll see. But um, I loved it and hated it at the same time. But I would like to do it again. <laughs> it's like that enjoyment fear. I don't know it, and yeah. how to explain that any better. Like, I'd love to do more, but I just don't know what I'm capable of. But I'm open to figuring that out, if that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, I, I did enjoy it. More than you know. I think so I always just like talk myself out of stuff all of the time though I'm always like I can do this and then when it actually comes to it I'm like nope mm -mm, can't <laughs> nope can't do that <laughs> but I do do it and it's fine and thank you because people have said nice things about it but obviously I look at it in a different light <laughs> but I want to do it again it. just doing new things is hard isn't it sometimes but it's not yeah. hard it's just new I guess yeah I, I'm, I'm a learn on the job type person as well so it's sort of like I, I can research as much as possible and nothing will go into my brain until I'm actually there doing it yeah so I'm the same you've just got to kind of jump in work with people that you know and you trust and you know won't sort of have a go at you for getting it wrong but you'll get constructive criticism rather than just being told oh you fucked up like and I think that's luckily most of the promotions that are in our area are like that. We've got some very, very good promoters who yeah. are supportive and have got the right mindset with stuff. So it's a good place to be at the minute for me, I think. I think so. Like, I never I never thought I would do backstage interviewing, but, like, DJ was just like, do you want to do it? And I was like, go. <laughs> so I did, and it, it, was, a, it was a thing. Um but people are, so, that's part of like the local promotions and everything and everyone being so lovely and everyone knowing each other is like they kind of recognise that people are capable of stuff maybe that they probably didn't think of before. Um, and I do like that about the local promotions and like everybody is like a little bit of a team. Everyone's like on each other in a sense of like trying to, I don't know, try to get the best out of everybody, I guess, which is really nice. And yeah, it kind of has obviously made me think that I am capable of doing things that I didn't think I could do, which was nice. And like, obviously, when I did do that backstage interview and I did put out a post going, if there's anybody out there that can give me some like advice for or like, you know, give me like some sort of way of doing it better next time or anything. And there were a couple of people that sent messages, but most of it was just lovely. They were just like, that was yeah. really good. And here is what you could probably do a little bit better. But, like, you know, what you did is great. And then you're like, oh, I feel less bad now. <laughs> I feel less stressed about it. <laughs> is there anything that you've done outside of wrestling that surprised you? Like, that mm. you, was it like that sort of, I can't do this, but I can. And I don't know whether I can. And then someone's just going, go on, have a go. <laughs> um, I don't know, probably. But, like, I can't think of anything right now. Let me have a think. Yeah, I was expecting the answer of, yeah, but I can't discuss it in present company. Because, <laughs> yeah. I tell you guys everything. Maybe not everybody else, but I tell you guys everything. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was an extra once, and I didn't think I could do that. But it was <laughs> it was a Hollyoaks um, after dark thing that was, like, an online thing. And it was just because I was working in a bar. And they were like, we need people to act. And I was like, I don't, I don't do that. I just pour pints and give people drinks. This is like, you know, they were like, well, like, you know, just like stand in the audience and do 
whatever. So we like filmed this thing where it was um, a band on and like they were recording in behind us. But then they like grabbed me and were like, you, you can you do this for us where you walk across the scene and with purpose? And I was just like, ah, I was so shy then. Like I like I can be anxious, but when this when they asked me this, I was very shy. I was a very shy girl. And um I had to do this scene over and over again where I was like walking in front of the actors and I was just like, oh my God. But I did it and I felt better afterwards. There was no words, but I still did it. Walking with a purpose is harder than you think it is when you have to do it about a thousand times. <laughs> it got better every time. <laughs> So that's it. When we see you on Wednesday, I am asking you to walk across with purpose. <laughs> <laughs> walk in front of those people that are on the screen with a purpose. <laughs> Just don't be like, I stand there for too long. <laughs> mm -mm. Oh, no. I, I mean, once upon thought about a time, I don't, can you hear my cat shouting? I don't know yeah. if you can. Cause I've got, oh, you can. She's she's having the zoomies. So, so sorry. <laughs> Oh, she's running fun. around with purpose. She's copying <laughs> her mum. Um, I once upon a time was learning some sort of wrestling move to just like get in a ring at some point without telling anybody and just being like, "What is she doing?" and just like throwing it out there and just watching the shock on anyone. It was it was last year. I was just like, "I'm gonna do this and not tell anybody." But obviously, the person I'm wrestling, like. <laughs> You know, just land a move on somebody but um yeah. it hasn't happened <laughs> but i thought yet. about it <laughs> yet there's still time <laughs> it would be a massive surprise though like if you're just sort of film if one of like say someone like lana's kicking off at you because you're not filming her from the right angle or something like that and you just sort of get in the ring being like i am a dropper <laughs> she would be perfect to do that for though she, she would actually she's just amazing <laughs> She's it's terrifying, person. but it would be amazing. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone say a bad word about that woman. Lana is... I just... I, ha I have a lot of lovely things to say about Lana. She's just such a gorgeous person. But, you know, mean and... Uh, oh, yeah, evil bitch, you know. Evil yeah. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't even say that with a straight face, though, can you? It's like... She might be the queen of mean, but she is such a sweetheart. <laughs> she's just she's gonna shout at me so much on Wednesday. <laughs> uh, oh no, this I, one, when's this one going out? Is this one going out on the Wednesday? So she won't have seen it. She won't have seen it. You're <laughs> safe for another week. <laughs> I can't get shouted at until she's watched it. It's fine. <laughs> oh, no, this is going out in four days. This is going out before Atomic. This is going out. Oh. <laughs> You can you can just put a Halloween costume on. She'll never know. <laughs> just put a mask on. We'll hide you. Maybe if you go as Lana, she won't be that upset. <laughs> I would not have the bravery to wear the amazing outfit she wears. Oh, she just looks incredible all the time. Every time I see her, I'm like, you look amazing. You look so good. She's just ridiculous in it's the best way. <laughs> oh, well on Instagram being like, I don't care how you think I should look. I love my thick thighs. I love my big ass, and I'm going to embrace it. So deal with it. Yeah, but that's the I know. No. <laughs> the 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 picture from I think it was Odyssey. Um, there was a picture at Lana's traditional picture of her like stood at the top of the stairs, flaunting the bum, and then there was another one uh, where Lucia Lee jumped in. I um, know where you're going. <laughs> third one that appeared that included our wonderful referee James Greenwood and I absolutely cried I love all of those people I swear they're all just such nice people just has me in stitches so many times when we worked Comic Con he came, uh, I think it might have been Jay uh, from TNT came wandering up and was like have you seen this picture and I was like no, and it was James Greenwood dressed as Princess Leia in the comic book. I have not seen this picture. I need you to send it to me, please. Was he in the gold you. bikini? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... That doesn't surprise me, though. Like, I feel like that. Like the Greenwoods are just costume, like, central. So yeah. I'm... Um... 
I mean, it's like, he's, he's just, I, I have a picture on my phone of him sat on the side of the atomic ring. Um, with the pink socks. Like, paint me like one of your French girls flashing his pink socks because he always tells all the referees black socks only. Um, but obviously, because of Wrestle Atomic's whole on Wednesdays, we wear pink. He started wearing pink socks. Yeah. <laughs> he was it's just beautiful. That. He has me in stitches. He really does. Yeah. I just love the I love the Greenwoods. I asked them to adopt me, but I'm yet to uh, get the papers through because you know. <laughs> but I love them so much. Be having the best time. I mean, all of the time. Have you seen like? Did you see the Halloween photo of them all as ghosts at the pumpkin park the other day? Oh my oh, god! Yeah. They just yes, they are the cutest family in the world. I can't cope with them, honestly. One of them- birthdays last year i think they'd gone out in liverpool doing a treasure hunt all dressed as smurfs and you're just like zero fucks given about anything <laughs> just like this is what we're doing this is where we're having fun we're here people get obsessed with celebrity families but i'm i'm, I'm obsessed with the greenwoods they're my favorite ever yeah like you'll all You'll always see me with James, like, just hovering around doing stuff just because, like, he's just the nicest person ever. But, like... This is how nice he is. When, obviously, we're at, like, the double headers at TNT or whatever, and, obviously, you know I, I pretty much bring my kids to every single wrestling show that I go to because it's just easier than trying to find somebody to look after him for that length of time. And, obviously, Alana always gets in the ring, doesn't she, and tries wrestling yeah. or whatever's in the ring. And bless him, James Greenwood, every time he sees it, he will always go in and make sure he counts a pin for her. Like, she will always pin somebody, and Greenwood will always be the one that counts the pin. <laughs> oh, my God, that's adorable. Yeah, there there was actually, I think the first time he ever did it, he didn't realise somebody took a photo of it, and we put it on Instagram, and he was like, oh, my God, there's actual photographic evidence of this. Like, <laughs> there's photographic evidence of you counting the pin of my four-year-old daughter. <laughs> Honestly, like there's footage that I see of your four year old daughter all of the like the recently session mass at Box Park. Was it I thought it was Box Park, was it? Just, no, it was Oh no, 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 that was together. that wasn't that was a ever yeah, that was Jay's little girl. But the footage I've seen at TNT, everyone just is like so lovely with the little ones. It's the yeah. cutest thing ever. Like I can't cope with it. Yeah, like Helen taught her how to do a wrist lock and then session moth just like as a, a big old wrestling match with her in the ring and stuff and oh it's great it really is <laughs> have we got a future little wrestler on our hands or, or a wrestling wrestler the arena. yeah <laughs> can't wait for that day wrestling training on top of it God. <laughs> as long as she sticks to wrestling and doesn't follow dad down the deathmatch route i don't know which one i'd prefer <laughs> We love a little bit of a death match, though. We do love a bit of a death match. Yeah. I get a bit squeamish, but the one death match I wanted to actually see was Lucy and... um, Casey? There we go. My brain just went... "Uh." (laughs) (laughs) That was the one death match I was, like, really interested in, really wanted to see. And I got managed to get stood at the front to go and watch it. And then got pulled away, didn't I, Lauren? Because my husband decided to swan dive the floor and crack his head open on a table. How did I not know about this? Um, he was he was diving after the littlest one, but there was like a crushed grape or something on the floor and he slipped. And you know the tall tables at TNT with the massive metal legs? Yes. He went the- head first into one of the metal supports. Yep, so I didn't get to see that match. Wow. And he had so there was a lot of death match going on at that point then. <laughs> yeah, he had to have his head glued back together. And oh I had to God. calm down my two-year-old who was screaming because Daddy had just speared him into the floor. <laughs> so you saw some sort of death match. It's not like oh. you completely missed out. <laughs> no, what I saw was my husband holding a t- bit of tissue <laughs> to his head and then going... Am I bleeding and pulling it back and me just seeing part of his skull and going, yeah, you need to go see medics for that. Go away before I do the to other side. (laughs) Mm. Well, uh, I won't... (laughs) (laughs) I mean, oh no. Mm. (laughs) 
I don't we... really like blood very much. It's not my fave, but for some reason, when it happens in a death match, I'm fine with it. It's fine. It, it's it's fine. They know what they're doing. <laughs> they Does know it's really? going to happen. <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> but I can only hope. <laughs> but when it's accidental broken, I don't yeah. like that so much. Yeah. I, do you know what I think we need to see now, Lauren? I think we need to see death match Katie. <laughs> no, no, no. no thank you no. <laughs> no 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 you just running in and like beating somebody up with like light tubes and stuff and then you can run away again <laughs> oh i'd happily do that i'd love to do that i light tube up one's head and then run <laughs> i would honestly i would love to smack someone with a light tube not anyone in particular that i can think of to my mind but i would love to do it because why not i, I think why we need to not? put i think we need to put that in jay's head at the next show <laughs> Katie gets to smash somebody with a light tube. Well, Lewis Johnson has it coming to him, if you ask me. If we can all just line up in a queue, me, DJ, Mark, Simon, everybody else that got stalked, we can, I think we can settle it that way with a light tube, I reckon. I think real wrestling have got enough light tubes to um, <laughs> help that, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love Deathmatch Wrestling. So I remember once upon a time at TNT when I was working on the door and it was just, Jay came to me and he was like, I've got, like, with this bat, he was like, can you glue Lego bricks to this? And I was like, yeah, of course I can glue Lego bricks. I was just stood at the door just gluing all these Lego bricks to this bat. And I was just like, I love my job. <laughs> I know, I can you imagine if somebody asked the question, what were you doing this weekend? Well, I was gluing Lego bricks to a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I love throwing was... stuff out to normal people like that and they're like I'm sorry what <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was helping for with weapons for DOA and I was making um banger bats so all the little like bangers I was oh yeah sticking them onto the bat but then you drop one and you shit yourself and then you can't actually drop the bat because you'll break them all and then you've got to pick them all it was so stressful but so fun um, <laughs> And then I made my my favourite thing I've ever made, and I was so glad it worked really well. Um, do you remember Cole Radrick's little mini Nerf gun with um, drawing pin bullets on him? Yes, I have footage of that. <laughs> that was my creation, and I was so nervous about whether it would actually stick in. And the first time he shot it, and it actually stayed in somewhere, I was just like, "Yay, my weapons!" <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the first weapon I ever made was a light tube log cabin that Drew Parker went through. And, oh, my goodness, I felt so sick. Like, the thought of someone getting genuinely hurt by something that I'd made, like, if if it happened, I'd be like, well, did I do something wrong? Did I tape it wrongly? Was it in the wrong place? Like, I was so petrified. But thankfully, everything was okay. I love that your sentence there was like the first weapon I ever made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a list here. <laughs> I'm sad now. See, I'm not creative in the slightest. So asking me to make weapons, it'd be like, it's a knife. <laughs> <laughs> but the knife is already made. That doesn't work. You have to add exactly. to it. <laughs> not creative like the only thing i could probably think of is adding another knife to the other side <laughs> that might be a little bit too deadly that jamie exactly <laughs> this is why nobody asks me to make weaponry <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe we'll keep you away from the weapon yeah. making for now on. Um, yeah i can do other things just not weapons <laughs> I'm too we'll violent. Find you a weapon that you can make of some sort that's something like a Lego See, brick. <laughs> that's the thing. I should be able to come up with a list of the deadliest children's toys to use in death matches because I have that many strewn around my house. Like I'm surprised they hurt. that's not a, a thing. Just a kid's toys match, like because that's brutal. Because I can imagine that most Shall parents be. can agree Shall that like standing on kids' toys is horrible. <laughs> I think we need to. Um, I think we need to push that as a match type, at like a yeah. family friendly show. On an ignition, <laughs> have a, have a or death something. match at a family friendly show, but it's all kids' weapons. Yeah, even at Atomic when they when Tony was it was Tony who had the box of Legos, wasn't it? Yeah, it and was that was just yeah. I don't know why, but it makes me cringe every time, and they just it's just Lego. <laughs> it's just Lego. 
Lego plug boards anything that's relatable it always gets me more like I can see gusset plates being shoved into someone's head and all that kind of stuff it doesn't massively affect me because I don't know how it feels like even light tubes going over your head you don't know how that feels yeah it looks deadly but it I can help <laughs> standing on lego or standing on a plug yeah we've all done it yep. we all know that pain so it's like it really does get you in your proper cringe yeah you just reminded me of a story that someone told me when they stood on a plug and it went right through the bottom of their foot. Oh. And that made, yeah, <laughs> it made me feel sick. That's why I was like, what? Not many things make me cringe, but that does. Just, mm. Mm -mm. no, oh. thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And that wasn't even wrestling. That was just like normal life stuff. Yeah, I've done that where I've had an earring go into the bottom of my foot. I was on holiday and I jumped into a pool, but like feet first. And there was an earring on the bottom of the pool, and I stood straight on it and went straight into my foot. That was so. It wasn't oh, even your. It earring. wasn't even mine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, that was grim. Having my <laughs> uncle try and like pull it out of my foot. <laughs> oh. Mm -mm. No, that was awful. Yeah. Deathmatch wrestling has nothing on an earring in a swimming pool, if you ask me. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we need to get Deathmatch Katie going. That, that's what we need to do. Just you attacking people with, like, deadly weapons. Oh, I would love that. Let me loose. Let me hit people with stuff. Give it to me. <laughs> do it. Like, have, do backstage interviews and then just hit them at the end of it with, with a weapon. <laughs> We need to go and do one of those like break rooms where you literally go and they give you a sledgehammer and a load of crockery and TVs and stuff and you just go yes. and smash shit. I would love yes, to we do, do that. Yes, we do. Although Infamous is coming up this weekend, so what what can we do there? <laughs> <laughs> well, the record street fight, street fight, something, I don't know. I'm gonna okay. ring DJ after this and be like, "Hello, it's yeah. Halloween, and I've been told I need to hit people with stuff. What have you got for me?" <laughs> yeah, but if you're doing that, you've got to include me and Lauren in it too. It's like we've got to be able to hit somebody as well. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm sure we could figure something out. Here's me just like demanding. This is my rules, and this is yeah. These are, <laughs> what is it? These are my demands for me for me to be at the next show. <laughs> yeah. Oh. He'll be fine. <laughs> DJ will let us do it. It's all good. He'll be part of it. You know he would. He loves a little bit of drama. He does. In a good I, way. I think all drama. Pitbull. Yeah, well, that's it. Speaking of drama, Pitbull still owes me an apology. Very true. What, what happened? At the last... Uh, the, not the last OTP, OTP show. The one before the last OTP oh, show. Oh, I missed that one. Um... Pitbull decided to appear and throw DJ over the real wrestling table. Oh, yeah, I did see for I was this. stood behind the real wrestling table, obviously doing my job of selling things and talking to people and things. And, yeah, DJ got launched right into my leg. And, obviously, you know, I deal with pain anyway. And, yeah, he dislocated part of my body <laughs> by being thrown into me. So I, I need words with Pitbull. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like there's a bit of revenge that you need to get on these people. Yeah, if if DJ lets me hit Pitbull with something, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> like, oh, it's just with something. Just with something. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, you know, we ruined part, <laughs> like half of our stock got destroyed. But, you know, you I'll that. happily hit him with a steel chair. <laughs> Create a mega weapon with all the stuff that got broken. and then Could you imagine, like, just gluing all the toys to, <laughs> to I'll do it. I've done it before. Oh. I'll glue it all together. Correct. Transformer weapon. It's fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this needs to be a thing now. Like, genuinely, we need to ring DJ and be like, right, this is happening. Don't care if you say yes or no. This is just happening now. <laughs> Someone call him. And my phone's my phone's doing this. Someone else call <laughs> ring Look, him. <laughs> we don't need DJ. We'll just get Gnome on board and that'll be fine. Yeah, that's better actually. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get the real boss involved. <laughs> oh, I'm staying out of that one. So 
So anyway, is, that's on weird. the 26th of October. <laughs> it is, it is, yeah. This is, this is a weird, weird world we live in, isn't it, really? <laughs> I love it. I love it. It yeah. kind of makes... Because reality can be a little bit boring, can't it? So it's nice to, like, you know, mildly threaten people and just know it's fine. It's, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> One of the greatest things about wrestling, like, even though everyone goes on and makes such a big point about it's fake and all that stuff, and I, I hate that term, like, it, when when we've seen people get genuinely injured by it, I really hate people mm-hmm. calling it fake, because they are genuinely putting their bodies on the line. Scripted, yes, planned, choreographed, whatever you want to say, um, they obviously try and hurt each other as little as possible, but there is genuine connections there. Um and I, I can't remember where I was going with this. Um, my brain's just gone. That's at a point. It's gone out the window now. But <laughs> it may be pre- predetermined, but people yes. are amazing at what they're doing. Like you can't, you can't but, like argue that they're not doing incredible things, even yes. if it is a predetermined thing. Like so what? No, but so my what? Was, it may be predetermined, but when you walk into a venue, you do get sort of. When it's a good show, you do get transported to like a different world for three hours. Yeah. And it is nice to just sort of leave everything at the door and just get invested. Like I say, I've had a, such a reputation for being the loud cow at the front of the crowd. And even though I'm well, really. We love you for it. <laughs> even though I'm yeah, no longer at the front, she's at the back and still loud. <laughs> <laughs> I still hear her though. I can hear her on the balcony at TNT. It's so good. But it's that's we're we're there to embrace what they're trying to tell us, even though we know it's predetermined and stuff like that. Like that's the whole point. You don't go into a cinema and sit and watch Terrifier and be like, "Well, I'm not scared because I know he's." I watched that today. Just um, to me and Gabriel want to see it. Um, <laughs> But you, you just you don't walk into a cinema or sit and watch a soap opera and go, well, they're not real, so I don't really care. Mm-hmm. Like you, you embrace what the story that they're trying to tell you. Yeah, it's just cranks though. Every day people watch stuff that is predetermined because it's all on television and people love TV. They love films. They love music. Guess what? They wrote that song before they sang it. <laughs> Shark horror. Like I'm not I'm not being funny, but most of life. That you enjoy all the stuff you enjoy is already been written it's yeah. already been decided so the fact that people can get on their high horse and go mm, like you know what like, they already know they're gonna win or whatever so do you enjoy it like yeah it, what what does it matter you don't know what's gonna happen it's they might but you don't <laughs> oh, yeah. it's about enjoyment i think people forget that sometimes in wrestling or like about wrestling is the fact that it's there to enjoy and like people like spend all that time like working so hard to do the things they do like sometimes i am like how have you done that i don't even care that you know that you're gonna win or lose how did you flip off that and did you do that and like how like i don't even i i don't know how people do the stuff that they do sometimes and i'm more impressed at the fact that they can do it like you forget if people forget like that to enjoy the moment of wrestling instead of like thinking about you know like what is going to happen yeah it's just like sometimes people are just a bit uptight aren't they and they just need to let it go like but like i said like most of life is spent like everything you're watching and you enjoy has already been decided so (laughs) i still think football is not real i think that's you know what i was thinking that then i was like you know what it wouldn't (laughs) surprise me if we got told tomorrow that football is a predetermined sport it wouldn't shock me at all. See? <laughs> I'm just nodded. Yeah. Gavin knows. He knows. It's just, yeah. I just don't, and you know, the world is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, and it's, it's genuinely it's it's like, frustrating. We watch wrestling, we enjoy it. Like, regardless of the outcome, we enjoy it. Whereas people who watch football, if their team loses, they've not enjoyed it. They They get annoyed and get tanked up and angry and some people beat other people up which is absolutely stupid i have never once known a domestic incident to happen because of wrestling like you don't go to a show do you know what i mean you don't go to a wrestling show and then go and hit somebody because your favorite hasn't won 
But yeah, I mean, I don't know. But, Your husband had a domestic with the table during a death match, so <laughs> I can't say that is. <laughs> yeah, but that was with an inanimate object. So that doesn't count. <laughs> Does it? I think that's up to the people to decide if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, it's it, it just makes me laugh. It's like I'd rather watch wrestling and you know be a, a be a fan. Like, yeah, I might not be happy if somebody wins or loses, kind of thing, but. <sighs> It is what it is. I've still enjoyed it because people have gone out there. I was going to say, is that the cat? I thought it was one of our kids. She's going mental. No, it's definitely Lilo. Lilo, hi. You gonna come say hi? No. Come a cat moment. Are we a cat <laughs> moment? She's fully hyper. That's fine. Very hyper. Yeah, she's fine. Mine's <laughs> asleep, but just heard the meow. Opened one eye, and then it's just gone back to sleep. <laughs> See, I normally get attacked by my cat on the podcast, but because I'm not at home, I don't have a little Danhausen just appearing, like, with bum in my face. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Lilo's disappointed as well. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's oh. going on. I normally, it's not even late. Normally, we, we have a game. We play around, like, just before bedtime, just to, like, calm them. So, like, they don't wake me up. So it's not even late enough for them. She's just going crazy because I'm talking to people. Normally sit at home just talking to them, so she's clearly quite jealous about it. I was going to say, it's like, no, no, where, where's my time to shine? Like, yeah. what is going on? <laughs> Cats. <laughs> I've figured out the name for this podcast now. Oh. What? Because we normally have a tagline, don't we, on everybody's video. This one's with purpose. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely doing it with purpose. I don't know what purpose it is, but it's definitely a purpose. <laughs> She's back again. I wish the I could. Purpose. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> I wish I could show you running around, but I don't. Oh, she's. Hang on. Oh, it's blurry. There she is. Look at the kitty cat. I don't know how to unblur it, unfortunately. Hello, crazy girl. <laughs> how many cats? Pardon? How many cats do you have? Two. 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 The other one's very quiet. She's literally the sweetest thing you'll ever... I've never met an animal quite like her. She's just the cutest thing in the world. It's this one... In wrestling, so many of us have cats. Like, it is a yeah, very we're... cat-filled society. <laughs> how many cats do you have, Lauren? Just the one now. I used to have two, um, and one disappeared. Oh, oh no! So, don't know what happened to her. We We... We we have decided that there was a camper van that used to live like across the across the way, and we've decided that she um, got in the camper van when they went away, and she's gone on holiday permanently. I mean, it's quite possible cats do like to abandon people <laughs> for their own purpose. No, <laughs> no yeah, I was gonna they, say, um, I, yeah. I've got two, and one of mine thinks he lives in pretty much every house on the street. I'd just, be the same if I was a cat. I'd be like, you want to feed me? You can feed me. Let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Sorry, Elizabeth. <laughs> oh. Kitty! Hi, kitty. Is, oh. is your cat a boy or a girl? Girl, Luna. Oh, see, I read... Oh, TikTok's lying to me. TikTok was this thing yesterday was saying like how black cats are mostly male. Whereas yeah. my cat is female and so is yours, so I feel like this is a lie. <laughs> and so I've got a black and white cat, that's Buddy, and I've got my ginger one, that's Dan Housen. Yeah, I love that. I think, I I think wish the I could show should you have one. been switched, to be fair. <laughs> they just never live up to their names, really, I don't think. Yeah. Well, I suppose we rescued Lilo does. Buddy anyway, so we already had, uh, he already had the name, we didn't get a choice in that one, so... Oh, did you not? I would have renamed. I would have been like, mm, something similar. <laughs> it, it, it was like, when we called him, he actually answered to his name. So we were like, do you oh, know okay. what? Ch save, like, confusing him. Because we've only had him for just over four years. And he's now, what, 11? So he was accustomed to the name. So we were like, we're not going to uh... we're not gonna change it. But, yeah. He thinks not, he's well, about <laughs> a seven-year-old. Yeah, exactly. it's, a, it's a long yeah. time, and it? it is me saying this. I changed Lilu's name when I first went to see Lilu. She was Jim because they thought it was a boy, um, and then it turned out she wasn't a boy, and they named her Lulu. 
and I was like, no, I'm not having a cat called Lulu. That's just not happening. It's not happening. And I love the fifth element. And she'd been called Lulu for a long time. And obviously the main female character in Fifth Element is Lilu. So she became Lilu. And it's not that much of a transition. So yeah. she was fine with it. And now she's like, she's fine. <laughs> I'm kind of sad that you renamed her. I'd love to have had a girl cat called Jim. Everyone was like, you should have just kept it as Jim. And I was just like, I can't. I had a fr- I had like one of my best friends. and Well, still one of my close friends is called Jim. And I was just like, it's just too much. Too many. Could have lied and said you named the cat after <laughs> <laughs> I'm too honest. I can't help it. <laughs> oh, my days. Lauren, have you seen how long we've been recording for? Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? We have been recording for an hour and five minutes so far. Oh, I love you guys. Like, I love how now it's got to the point where we just can talk and be recording for this long and not even realise we've actually done it. <laughs> the fact that I've managed to sit on the floor for this long is a bonus. Like, you know, I oh, love sitting oh, on the floor. floor. I'm, I'm a floor scary. girly. <laughs> I, I'm not. Them. Like, I'm going to struggle so much to get off this floor now. Like, I'm going to have to get out my dad to come and help me. <laughs> drop and roll until you feel like you can sit up again. You'll be fine. <laughs> I might it's have the way to do, to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, it has got to that point. I think we might have to like say we're at the end of the podcast because otherwise we are probably going to sit here for another four hours just talking about the most random things in the world of wrestling. The, the only thing we were supposed to mention, obviously, we have slightly mentioned the Atomic Show, um, which will be next week by the time this comes out. Um, yes. It's pointless plug-in tickets because, well, you can't come if you didn't buy one. So, tough titties. Should have bought one earlier. Um, oh, wow. And buy tickets for very soon uh, that Atomic have just announced. Is their massive second birthday, is it, Katie? It will be the second birthday, yeah. Uh, the, do you want to tell them about it? The, the big birthday celebration show. That's pretty much it. It's going to be a big birthday celebration at Content. Um, and I have written the date down. It is... The second of April, twenty twenty-five. <laughs> I had to write it down because I'm terrible at these things. Tickets and stuff will be coming soon. Coming soon, yeah. It's so, gonna be great. I'm very excited. Yeah, very excited. That's Atomic ran Future Future Yard this year, which was a different venue to usual, and that was an absolutely awesome day. Um, even though we didn't get to do it outside, but it was a lot of fun. Um, no, but maybe again sometime next. Week. Next year. <laughs> um, yeah, keep an eye on Atomic Socials and more details will follow. So if you want to follow on from that, Katie, with Atomic Socials and uh, then your socials for where people can find you. Ooh. You didn't predetermine, you didn't tell me this stuff. I don't have it written down. <laughs> You're the media queen, you should know this. You're the socials girl, Katie. You should know them all. I know the wrestlers, I don't know my stuff. Um, I'm just KL Dubs on anything or Katie Louise. I don't know what it's, it, the tags are Katie Louise, but it's KL Dubs on things. And then obviously it's Wrestle Atomic for Atomic. Or, it, it, yeah. <laughs> It comes up as like wrestle atomic or atomic wrestle on things, so it's one of them. You'll find it. It's got yeah, a crate, type in a atomic little. with wrestling, you'll find it. It's fine. <laughs> wrestle <laughs> atomic. <laughs> oh, Katie, thank you so much for joining us. Honestly, it has been an absolute pleasure. I've really enjoyed myself, even though I am sat on the floor, like so uncomfortable now. <laughs> I appreciate that you've sat on the floor this long, honestly. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if there is a couch behind me. I am doing the stupidest thing in the world, like by not sitting on it. But I do the same. I do this. I can't sit. I can't. At the moment, I'm sat on a chair, but otherwise, I would normally do the same. I think it's because, like, if I was sat on the couch, the laptop, I'd have to like maneuver the screen and it'd look funny. And I was just like, I'll just sit on the floor and deal with the consequences after. But, you know, it's done. It's fine. It's not an issue. But. <laughs> honestly it has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you katie and i can't wait to see you this weekend because it's always fun to see your beautiful face gonna give you a hug <laughs> yeah. it's like five days see you at infamous um, and then at atomic yeah yeah we get to see you twice in the same week. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Amazing. Hey, um, yeah, like go follow Atomic because obviously best one of the best wrestling shows in a brewery. The only wrestling show in a brewery. I don't know, but it is the best. Yeah, they have pizza, they have cake, like what more do you need? Go follow Katie, but not in a star crush way, because we've already had that. That's a bit weird. Yeah, once is enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, st- we, st- we still don't like Lewis for that, but we can, we can hit him with a light tube. It'll be fine. Light tubes. <laughs> light tubes. Lauren, yeah. thank you once again for me being my amazing co-host and dealing with all the graphic work that you have done. You've updated all of our... <gasps> hang oh on. My- hang How on. did that happen? Hang on. <laughs> How can we do that? Oh my god! Oh, I don't work on mine. Oh, you have to just do like a proper little heart. There we go. It Love you guys. Like, it doesn't like me enough to do it. Are you, you two on your phone? The yes. No, you. There you go. I'm on a laptop. You're on phones. That'll explain it. That's why it's, it's fine. I'm not loved enough to have love hearts. I'll do it for you. But you watch it not happen though. No. Yay, thank you. I feel loved. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Katie. We really appreciate it. And Thanks yeah, for having me. If anyone else, we can't come to Atomic, but if anyone else does want to come and see any of the three of us, because we will all be there, go grab your tickets for Infamous as well. Yeah, you can come and like hurl abuse at us at Infamous. Fine, we'll uh, we'll take the abuse there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Why bring not? us cake. That'll make us happy. Oh, cake. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Cake and like, insults. We love it. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let us know what you think of Atomic. Let us know what you think of Infamous. Let us know what you think of Katie's amazing social skills. Let us know what you think of Lauren's new amazing graphics because I personally think they are the best. Because I, I, they might not be on this one. We'll see. It doesn't matter. They'll be on some. It's fine. You can let us know when they're eventually out. I don't mind. Um, They'll be amazing. I know they will. They are. I've I've seen the little previews. They are brilliant. I mean, I'm not creative in the slightest as we have figured that out. So (laughs) for me, anything that's better than, you know, Microsoft Paint is amazing. (laughs) Don't Um, underestimate Paint. It's good. (laughs) <laughs> but in my hands it's not <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need evidence of this now what can you draw us I feel like we need something <laughs> I will draw you a picture at Infamous and you can see just how bad my drawing skills are I can't wait <laughs> actually I might right, I, you, this is my daughter's drawing okay this is better than anything I could do <laughs> I mean you're gonna have to prove it <laughs> I will I genuinely will like she will put me to shame anyway I'm gonna have to get off the floor because my legs have gone to sleep um <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us uh, make sure you tune in every Wednesday for the real wrestling podcast the unprofessional version um don't forget to join the guy the Scottish guys who do their um live podcast throughout the week whenever whenever they do it I don't think they have set days they just d- decide they're doing it um and please click the link in the description. We will add the uh, Render Bomb link. They are our sponsor for pretty much every episode that we that we do of our podcast. Anyway, um, we will make sure to put the link in the description below. And there will be a um, a cheeky little, I think it's ten percent discount on their website if you mm-hmm. go through the link. So make sure you do that. And don't forget to keep it real here on the Real Wrestling Podcast. Bye. Love you. We be talking wrestling in case you ain't get the message We riding out like a Tesla, we grinding for our successes And if you wanna get reckless, we'll send you out on the stretcher I'm sorry if we offend you, but you witnessing the pinnacle Might be a little cynical, all you hating is typical Honestly, you just miserable listening to our interview I keep it real Few already know that this is real Yeah